Hello everyone, this is Latha Akula. In this video, we are going to start with the new topic that is proteins. In the last video, we have completed about what are the different types of amino acids, right? How the polypeptide chain is formed and what is the what is the peptide linkage and now we'll see about what are proteins we know that proteins are uh, formed by the amino acids right here if you see proteins are called as macromolecules in the amino acids what we said the amino acids are the micromolecules and these proteins are formed by the subunits of the amino acids only hence we can say that proteins are the macromolecules and here they have one or more polypeptides so because different amino acids they form a polypeptide chain here the proteins consist of one or more polypeptide chains hence it is a bio macromolecule or macromolecule and if you see a single polypeptide consists of nearly 50 amino acids and this uh, these proteins are called as heteropolymers what is meant by heteropolymers here uh, if you see uh, the polypeptide chain is formed from the by the same type of amino acids which is repeated for n number of times that is called as homopolymer but if a polypeptide chain is formed by different types of amino acids that is called as heteropolymer here the protein is a only heteropolymer not a homopolymer that means it is made up of different types of amino acids and in, uh, if you see about the uh, in the animal world the most abundant protein in the animal world is called as collagen this collagen is um, mostly present in the connected tissue of the animal body if we see on the uh, on the biosphere on the earth what is the most abundant protein that is nothing but rubisco this rubisco is a enzyme actually so all enzymes are proteins only hence we can say the enzyme this enzyme is also a protein so rubisco full form is ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase this is the enzyme involved in the carbon fixation uh, during the photosynthesis the carbon dioxide was converted into the glucose by means of this enzyme rubisco and if is uh, this is about the interaction and if you see the structure of the protein it can be studied in four levels what are the four levels primary structure secondary structure tertiary structure and quaternary structure primary secondary tertiary and quaternary in four levels the structure of the proteins can be studied if you see the primary structure here what is meant by primary structure the sequential arrangement of this amino acid in a polypeptide chain and the linear form that is called as primary structure what is the primary structure the sequential arrangement of amino acid in a polypeptide chains uh, is called as primary structure if you see this is a primary structure which is in the linear or straight chain like the structure here uh, the first amino acid was in the amine group side which is called as N terminal amino acid and the last amino acid is towards the carboxyl group side which is called as C terminal amino acid. The amino acid which is present near the N terminal amino N terminal is called as first amino acid and the amino acid which is present towards the C terminal one is called as the last amino acid it is called as last one here the numbering of amino acid was started from the N terminal to C terminal from N terminal it is called as 1 2 3 4 from N terminal onwards the numbering of amino acids was given and towards the C terminal whatever the amino acid is present which is called as the last amino acid this is called as primary structure of protein next one is secondary structure of protein now in this video we are going to study about secondary structure of proteins so what is the secondary structure of proteins here the proteins are not always in the form of straight rod like structures some portion of the proteins they were folded in the form of helix or beta pleated sheets here if we see what is alpha helix and beta pleated sheets if the alpha helix is here there is an interaction between every fourth amino acid that causes a helical structure 
and how it, it occurs here in the in every fourth amino acid there is intramolecular hydrogen bond is formed between the hydrogen group present in the amine group and the oxygen molecule present in the carboxyl group so there is a intramolecular hydrogen bond is formed because of that bonding that hydrogen bonding the protein will be in the folded in the form of helix and how this helix will be it is right handed it is right handed helix and examples for this alpha helix is keratin protein this keratin protein is present in hair nails horns of animals etc and next one is beta pleated sheets here like alpha helix here also hydrogen bonding is formed but here in alpha helix there is a bond hydrogen bond is formed within the same molecule hence we are calling it as intramolecular hydrogen bond but here in this beta pleated sheets there is a hydrogen bonding is formed between two molecules here if you see uh, beta pleated sheets two or more polypeptide chains they were held together by means of intermolecular hydrogen bonds intermolecular hydrogen bonds that is this hydrogen bond is not formed within the same molecule it is formed between two molecules intermolecular hydrogen bond is formed here there is a hydrogen bond is formed between two molecules here hydrogen uh, bond is formed between the carboxyl oxygen molecule present in the carboxylic group and hydrogen molecule present in the aminic group they form a hydrogen bond and here in addition to the peptide bond there is intermolecular hydrogen bond in the beta pleated sheets whereas in the alpha helix in addition to the peptide bond which is between the amino acids there is intramolecular hydrogen bond is formed okay this is intramolecular hydrogen bond and this is the intermolecular hydrogen bonding examples for this is beta pleated sheets is fibroin protein which is present in the silk and next one is collagen helix which is also come under the secondary structure here three polypeptides are uh, folded and uh, there were uh, uh, three polypeptide chains they have between them there is hydrogen bonds and locking and interlocking bonds are present and the next one is tertiary structure of the protein so after collagen helix the next structure is tertiary structure of the protein so this is the tertiary structure of the protein the long polypeptide chains they fold upon itself and form a hollow woolen ball like structure that woolen ball like structure of the protein is called as tertiary structure and this tertiary structure is the it gives the three dimensional view of the protein we will get the um, question which structure of the protein gives the three dimensional view of the proteins means what we have to answer tertiary structure so the proteins the tertiary structure of the protein that gives the three dimensional view of the protein and here this tertiary structure of the protein is ne necessary for the biological activities of the protein so all biological activities of the protein which structure is important tertiary structure and here what will happen this uh, because of the folding uh, in, in the tertiary structure distant amino acids they have been held together uh, and then all the amino acid side chains they were closer and forms the active sites they form the active sites of the protein if, for example where will see the active sites in enzymes uh, so here all enzymes are proteins only but all proteins are not enzymes in enzyme to act upon a substratum there are several active sites are present here because of the uh, this tertiary structure different distant amino acid side chains they will become closer and forms the active sites which are necessary for the enzymes an example for this tertiary structure is myoglobin so what is this myoglobin actually we know hemoglobin hemoglobin is, is a pigment present in the blood which carries oxygen to the body and here this myoglobin is the pigment which is present in the muscle cells so to carry the oxygen into the muscle cells 
this myoglobin is very important here this myoglobin it carries one molecule of oxygen whereas hemoglobin it carries four molecules of oxygen and myoglobin carries one molecule of the oxygen and here when compared to all the different structures this tertiary structure is a more stable because it has different bonds like peptide bond hydrogen bond disulfide bond ionic bond hydrophobic forces and wall forces this many type of bonds are present because of the presence of all these different types of bonds the tertiary structure of the protein is much more stable than the remaining structures so the last one the fourth one is the quaternary structure of the protein here if you see um, uh, what is a quaternary structure so if a protein has more than one subunit are polypeptides and each polypeptide has a primary secondary and tertiary structures then that is called as quaternary structure here these different subunits they are held together by means of hydrogen bonds and van der Waals forces and the most important examples for this quaternary structure is the hemoglobin what is the hemoglobin it is a blood, blood pigment right here hemoglobin is the important example for this quaternary structure and this hemoglobin Hemoglobin consists of four helical polypeptide chains. How many four helical polypeptide chains are present in that two alpha chains and two beta chains were present. This is the structure of hemoglobin here. It consists of four iron molecules and each iron molecule carry one oxygen molecule. Okay, and it has a two alpha chains, alpha one and alpha two, and two beta chains, beta one and beta two. Hence, we can call it as this structure as alpha two beta two structure. And here, each iron molecule it carry one oxygen molecule. Totally, four molecules of oxygen will be carried by this hemoglobin. So, this hemoglobin is the important examples for the quaternary structure of the protein.